Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get plants on your ceiling slash walls. Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. So I'm going to talk all about how I attach these plants to my ceiling or how you can do it to your wall and what plants you should use and how you should attach them to the walls and that. But I'm going to move the angle down because this is exhausting to be standing like this. So, okay. And we're back. I want some hot chocolate. Uh, just an update. <laughs> I'm out of my brace. For people who don't know, I had surgery on my arm back in January and I have had a big black brace on my arm for the last two months. I am not completely out of it. I still have to wear it to sleep and when I'm out and about doing stuff, but I'm allowed to start weaning out of it. So if you don't like scars, don't look for the next like two seconds, but this is this one little baby scar that I have here. And then there's two more under here. And then this is one from the first surgery. This is from the second surgery. So this arm is all, all messed up, but I'm out of the brace and can start moving it around and stuff. So if you're squeamish, you can start looking again. I, I stopped, I stopped showing gross stuff. Anyway, let's talk about hanging things from places. <coughs> Excuse me. So I got the idea to put plants on my walls from actually my boss who uh, her zoom background is like a pothos that climbs along the wall behind her. So she has like one pot of pothos and it just like takes over the whole wall. And to me, wall space is very valuable because I can put shelving on it as I've talked about in previous videos. But I was like, what if I put plants crawling along my ceiling? So I did. So what you guys saw before, that's my ceiling. And I absolutely love it. It makes it so that it's I don't know. It's just like as much real estate being taken up by plants in my room as humanly possible. And I really enjoy it. So yeah, I'm going to be telling you guys how I personally do it, what plants work best, all that kind of stuff. So let's, let's do that. Also, yes, I haven't replaced the plant that's in this one. So there's glasses in there now. Yep. That's, that's where I'm at. So the plants that I personally have on my ceiling right now, I'm looking in my mirror that bounces off but I will, let's, let's just show you. Shall we? Show and tell. Back up, up and down and up and down. So first I have this golden pothos that's in this pot here. And that has one strand here and one strand that goes there. This Scandapsis pictus argyreus that goes all the way this way. That one actually goes all the way to there, to like almost the other side of my room. And then I have, what else do I have? I have, Monstera adansonii, wide form in a pot here that goes up here over all the way to there. And then I have a regular form adansonii that comes from this patterned pot here up that has three strands of it to there. And then this is just a Scandapsis pictus silvery and that's just right there, just one little strand. So those are the plants that I have on my ceiling. I was also trying to brainstorm some other plants that I think would work. Uh, but yeah, I think in general, let me look, I made a list. And I'm fiddling with a hanger. I don't know if you can tell I like to fiddle with things. People were kind of freaking out when I was playing with scissors last time. And yeah, oh, someone made the funny observation. They were like, sorry, I'm just, someone made the fun, I need a fidget spinner for a while I'm shooting videos so that I'm not just annoying people. Uh, someone made the funny observation that I use kitty scissors because I should not be trusted with real adult scissors. And that made me laugh out loud and you're very right. But yeah, the different, the different plants that I would recommend using are in general plants that are fast growing, vining, they have to be vining, I'm pretty sure, uh, vining, fast growing plants. I say fast growing, first of all, because it keeps it interesting and you can keep like designing where it goes on your ceiling. And also it's because it's really hard. I'm so sorry, I'm fidgeting. Um, I need to sit on my hands. <laughs> It's, uh, it's really fun to be able to just like keep putting plants up on your ceiling, but also it's hard to get big plants of things with long vines sometimes. So this is sort of a cheaper version is to buy a smaller plant and then just wait for it to start vining. So I haven't even had these plants on my ceilings, ceilings, just one ceiling. I have one ceiling. I haven't had these plants on my ceiling even for a year yet. So this is all this growth in the past year. So. I would recommend highly any sort of Scandapsis pictus. So that is Scandapsis argyreus or Scandapsis silvery ann. I don't know so much about, I mean, I know a lot about it, but I don't know how well Scandapsis exotica would work because it seems to be more of a slow grower and 
yeah those are kind of hard to buy in long trailing ones and it takes a long time for them to trail but if you can find one i'll go go for it more power to you if you can find one i'm just saying it might not be that easy to find and what else pothos uh i have my golden pothos up there i would also i would say golden pothos or uh what is it called jade pothos would be the two pothoses that i would recommend because they seem to be the fastest growing in my experience and yeah i would recommend those two also if you can get marble queen in a big thing or if you can get like a cebu that has a lot of vining again those are those get more expensive and harder to find bigger versions of them but uh, I would also say that hanging trailing philodendron would be great. So like a heteracium, either the regular green one or lemon lime heteracium, or even a micans if you can get micans to start trailing. But again, they start to get more expensive and it's harder to find bigger ones. I felt like I was just talking really quickly for a very long time. Hold on, I need a, I need a hot cocoa break. I think I'm just hopped up on sugar. <laughs> We've calmed down, don't worry. Um, yes, the next one is, I don't think we've calmed down. The next one is Monstera Adansonii. So as you can see, or as you could see, I had two different forms of it. There are three forms of Monstera Adansonii like that are generally accepted. There are more fancier ones when you start looking into them, but I feel like the hair out there. Um, yeah, the ones that I have found that grow the fastest that I currently have trailing, climbing, crawling on my ceiling are the regular form and the wide form Adansonii. I also have a narrow form Adansonii. Let me show you. But that one, yeah, that's in this one here. So you can see it's sort of starting to trail, but not that much yet. So I personally have found, I personally have found, that's how you say words. I personally have found that that one grows a lot slower. But again, if you can find a trailing one of them, go for it. Oh my God. How many videos in a row am I going to kick the tripod? <laughs> um, what else? Sis's Discolor. I have a Sis's. I'm just going to keep showing you things. I apologize for the craziness today. Um, let's see. This one. Suki is barking. This. This one. This one. This one is a Sis's Discolor. And it has started to, oh my god, hold on. Okay, I think she stopped. This one is a Sissus Discolor, and it has actually grabbed itself onto the plants next to it. So that one is truly a natural climber and like sends out these little curly cue things that it tries to hook onto so that it can keep climbing. So that one I'm excited if it can start climbing all over the other ones. The only thing with that one that I would say is that it needs to be watered more often. And I personally have these up on a high shelf because that's the closest to the ceiling. But if you have this like just going along a wall, it might be easier, but it's it takes a lot of effort to get up on my bed to water this one. So it sometimes goes with less water than it it could probably use. So that's just a, a thing. And yeah, other ones that I would recommend, Raphidophora tetrasperma, those grow crazy quickly. So you might end up having to attach those somewhere. Should move you back down. Uh, yeah, Raphidophora, the dirty stuff on my bed you can't tell uh rifidophora tetras tetrasperma rifidophora tetrasperma um that would be a great one to put like in a pot on the floor and then let it crawl all up a wall so how do i attach these you might ask so i personally i'm not going to say any other ways because this way works for me perfectly fine i use little tiny clear command hooks they're about this big let me show you. Do I have an actual one sitting around? I do. I'm so organized or disorganized. I don't know. So this is what I use. It is a little clear command hook. See, it's just very little. And this works perfectly for some plants and not perfectly for others, but I use them for all of them, if that makes sense. So the stem thickness is kind of a thing that you have to think about. And this works perfectly for the skindapsis and the narrow and the regular form Adansonii. But it does not, because their stems just happen to be thin enough to fit through that little hole, because the hole's pretty small. It's not a hole, it's like a, it's a hook. It's not a fully, can you see? Yeah, so the, 
those ones, their stems perfectly fit in, you like pop them into here. And it would probably work for like philodendron, heteraceum, and micans and stuff like that. But the pothos and the wide form adinsoniae, their stems are too thick. So they're like thicker stems. So for those, I actually make a little circle out of plant tape. No, plant Velcro, which is, I'll insert clips here, but I make, I, <laughs> I make a little loop with, oh, I should show you that. One second. So this is plant Velcro and my thing is kind of small because I use this all the time, but I cut just a little piece of this, probably like that long. And then I make a loop out of it and I make it so that the soft side is facing towards the stem. So the stem isn't being irritated. And I make a little loop and then I loop, actually, no, I don't make the loop first. I put the stem, so imagine my pinky is the stem. This is turning into a great video. My pinky is the stem. I wrap the loop around the stem and then I close it. This is hard to do, one second. I wrap like this, but imagine that this stem, that this piece just ends right there. And then, so this is for the piece that I wanna put up. And then I put this up onto the ceiling and then I make it so that the hook is facing away. And then I just stick the Velcro to the tape like that. So it kind of, it doesn't go all the way through, but it hooks it and it holds it like this. And you wanna make sure that you have the direction of the, of the command hook. It's different from the direction from the other ones that this fits into, that would be just like going along with it, but this needs to be facing away from it, if that makes sense. So that when the stem itself pulls back toward the mother plant like this, the hook is holding it. I hope that makes sense. I feel like that made absolutely no sense, but I will insert clips here about how that looks when I put it up there. And yeah, that has worked pretty well for me. And it's nice because it means that you can put stems that don't necessarily fit in this little teeny tiny plastic thing. And you can use Velcro. So like Raphidophora tetrasperma, that rolls right off the tongue. Raphidophora tetrasperma stems are like chunky, chunky stems. So those would never fit in this little tiny piece, but that's where the plant Velcro comes in. So yeah, I am super excited to just have this stuff climbing all around my ceiling. And I'm not really sure there's one over here that has reached like almost to the, almost to the wall on the other side of my room. And I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet once it gets to the other side. I think I might have it go like this way or like loop back around kind of thing. But yeah, I haven't really decided yet what I'm gonna do with that. But how, ooh, I so apologize. This video is so hectic. How do I care for these plants once they're up there? Once they're up there is what I tried to say. How do I care for these plants when they're up? What? How do I care for these plants What? Wow. How do I care for these plants once they're up on the ceiling? There we go. So like I said before with the Sissus discolor, that one is kind of harder to take care of because it needs more water more frequently. So I would definitely, if you're the kind of person who gets lazy and doesn't, if you have to like put a lot of effort into watering a plant, I wouldn't recommend putting plants that need to be watered all that much uh, if you're doing the ceiling route. If you're doing the floor, or not the floor, <laughs> having them crawling around the floor, if you are putting it up a wall, it's not that big of a deal because they're probably more accessible. But for this scenario, like if you're putting a plant on a high shelf, it shouldn't have to be watered that often unless you're really willing to commit to watering it a lot because yeah, they dry out. But uh, I had my first experience with pests on one of these the other day. I found a mealy bug at the tip of one of these plants. So, Suki's barking again. I had one mealybug at the tip of one of these plants and that was the pothos and I took it all down. I took each hook down and I brought the whole vine into the shower and washed it off. So it honestly in my head seemed like a really difficult thing to have to like care for pests if I ever got pests on them. So I was like praying to the pest gods that I wouldn't ever get a pest because I thought it was going to be really difficult to treat them. But it's honestly not that hard. I say that now, <laughs> knocking on wood. Um, it's honestly not that hard to treat them because you just unhook them, bring them to the shower, treat them like you would any other plant and then bring them back. Just make sure that they're dry so they're not dripping everywhere. And then bring them back and then put the pot exactly how it was and make sure that the vines fit the way that they still were. 
And yeah, I kind of saved that plant because I think it also had a bacterial infection or whatever happens to pothos. It had some brown spots on it. And yeah, I've taken all of the bad leaves off of it and it is doing very well now. So that is how I treat it for pests. And yeah, if you're worried about getting pests on them, it's really not that big of a deal. It is kind of a hassle to have to take them down, but I honestly, it's worth, it's worth the trade for me because I really love the way that they look when they're up there. So yeah, that is this video about how I get plants on my ceiling. If you have any questions at all about this, please, 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 please leave them in the comments down below. I would be happy to answer any questions that anybody has about how I get the plants up there. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider pressing the subscribe button or the like button if you are feeling, no, or both. Wow, I forgot my own outro. Uh, press the subscribe, consider pressing the subscribe button or the like button or both if you're feeling like you're ready for a climb because they're climbing on the ceiling. That wasn't a very good one, but <laughs> I still have this tape. Okay, this is a better fidget toy than a hanger. It's just like fidgeting with this. I'm sorry if you could hear this. Anyway. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Go bye. Also, I realized early on, I said like, don't look if you don't like scars. I'm not gonna like censor my own videos. This is just what my hand looks like. Like this is my, this is myself. I'm not gonna like give a, I'm not gonna, I don't know. I'm not gonna censor my videos because this is just what I look like. I just wanted to give people a heads up because I was like showing you close up what they look like. But in the future, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna care. This is what my body looks like. And we're working on the thumbs up, ready? How'd that look? Pretty good. Okay, go back.